In this presentation, you're going to learn about anthropomorphism. So we're going to look at various examples of anthropomorphic art. Humans have an innate desire to apply human traits to non-human animals and things, which is called anthropomorphism. Actually, anthropomorphism is the attribution of human traits, emotions, or intentions to non-human things. And we have some examples here on the screen. It's part of a tendency in human psychology called personification, where we attribute human forms and characteristics to abstract concepts, such as nations, emotion, and natural forces. And we have a couple examples here of personification in terms of humans and animals. Anthropomorphism has actually been around for a long time. So we have examples here from ancient Egypt. This is an ancient statue. This is a very old painting. Looks like a human face, but yet it's a landscape. For the sake of our project that you're going to be doing, we're just gonna focus on examples that relate to humans and creatures rather than objects. In fables, anthropomorphized animals appear as human-like characters. So these are two images, these are two um, illustrations from Aesop's fables. And we can actually recognize them as they look human, but at the same time they have animal details. In modern literature, we see anthropomorphic characters in Alice in Wonderland, The Jungle Book, Winnie the Pooh, and even George Orwell's Animal Farm. And later on, we're gonna look at some popular movie examples, but these are just some from a long time ago. Non-animal examples of anthropomorphism include Thomas the Tank Engine and the characters in the Cars franchise. But we can also think about uh, from the children's TV show, Blue's Clues, Mr. Salt, Mrs. Pepper, and Paprika, and we have Mr. Spell here from Toy Story, who can talk. There's also this subculture called furry or furry fandom. And this is a form of anthropomorphism as well. Furry fandom promotes and creates stories and artwork involving anthropomorphic animals. There's a lot more about this in terms of how this um, culture works. If you'd like to find out more, just search furry fandom or furry cosplay. But these are co uh, costumes that people actually design and create for themselves to wear, to mostly to conventions where they all can <laughs> gather around together. And then popular uh, films and TV, television, video games. Uh, we encounter anthropomorphism in Disney, Pixar, and Dream, DreamWorks films and TV shows such as Mickey Mouse, uh, Frozen, we have Zootopia. I mean, the entire thing of Zootopia is anthropomorphism to the max. Uh, we have Madagascar, Kung Fu Panda, and Ice Age. Notice that the range of anthropomorphism here is very broad. For example, Madagascar animals, they don't really wear clothing per se, right? And they pretty much look like the animal. Kung Fu Panda, they wear appropriate clothes. Sven doesn't wear clothes, but yet he's very expressive like a human. Um, Zootopia, they wear clothes. And they even make fun of the fact when a character, <laughs> that one is not wearing clothes. And Mickey Mouse wears clothes. Though there is that debate of like, is Pluto anthropomorphic because Goofy's a dog and yet Pluto's a dog? Just something to think about. There are many more examples. We've got Sonic the Hedgehog, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, My Little Pony, Alvin and the Chipmunks, SpongeBob. I mean, these are all things that most of us are familiar with. Mascots are also anthropomorphic. We have a couple mascots here for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. When we think of uh, political parties, right? We think of uh, donkeys and elephants. Uh, we have Sharky from the San Jose Sharks. And we have another mascot here from um, Oregon, the Oregon Ducks. And we, even with our pets, 
we often use anthropomorphic language to suggest animals have emotions and intentions. Right? We, we, we assume our pets are being emotional with us when we have to remind ourselves they're just animals. And biologists have warned, they've been warned to avoid assumptions that animals share any of the same mental, social, and emotional capabilities of humans. So in their studies, biologists must rely on observable evidence, but we've got some examples here, right? We have a guy taking a selfie with an animal. The animal just happens to have his mouth open and looks very expressive, but we know it's probably not expressing anything here. Uh, this is a selfie of a man who, um, or, uh, you know, he takes care of the gorillas in the forest and these two gorillas were standing on their hind legs. But the way it's posed, it looks like a selfie. Anthropomorphic art has been used in many ways by artists. We've got illustrations, paintings, sculptures. And in the following assignment, you're going to look and look at and analyze artwork by two artists who use anthropomorphism and or ceramic busts in their work, Alessandro Gallo and Robert Arneson.